Welcome back. This is a screencast on how to graph using pages and numbers instead of Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. If you have a Mac and you have numbers, graphing is almost identical to the way you would set it up in Excel, it's something I covered in the previous video. Um, but as you know, the buttons are all in a different place. So let me run through this. The first step and something that'll save you a lot of time is to set up your table properly in numbers. The way you do this is to de decide on your experiment which is your dependent variable and which is your independent variable. The experiment that I'm going to use as an example is described in your lab manual. It's the experiment of Red Bull and its effect on heart rate. And in that experiment we can have a number of students or a number of subjects drinking a different number of Red Bulls. And the independent variable is the variable that we define, and the number of Red Bulls consumed is something that the experimenter defines at the beginning of the experiment. So that's our independent variable. And let's just set up a range from no Red Bulls to five Red Bulls. The dependent variable is something that we measure. And what we're going to measure are the output of the experiment the data collected is the heart rate in beats per minute. And notice that I'm using the units both in the table and in the figure. And I'll start with a pretty healthy person with a resting heart rate of 60. And we're going to feed this person Red Bulls and their heart rate will increase. And I'll just make up some numbers. Like that. Once your numbers are inserted, are entered into pages, you could save this file at this point. There's nothing worse than losing your data. You would select all of the data in your set. Uh, the way I did that was to click on the top corner, hold down the shift key, and click on the bottom corner. After the data is selected, I simply go to the top and ask the program to insert a chart. There, is, uh, there are a lot of charts here. The one that I want is a two-dimensional scatter chart or a two-dimensional scatter plot and the program will enter it at the bottom of the page. Taking a quick look at this I can see that I need to label the y-axis, label the x-axis, I need a line along the y-axis, a line connecting my dots, I need to get rid of this dot which is part of a key that I don't need when I'm only using one dependent variable and I'm gonna wanna take all of these blue circles and make them a little finer and I'm going to turn them black. Finally, I'm going to get rid of these horizontal lines that divide the graph. Uh, maybe that's just a matter of taste, but I think that they don't need to be there, so I'm going to take them out. When I click on the graph, everything that I need pops up on the, on the format bar on the side. I'm going to turn off the legend and when I turn off the legend this little circle at the top will disappear. This is normally where I define the use of that symbol in my graph but I only have one symbol so I don't need that legend. Another way to name that is the key. If I selected the title the program puts a title at the top of my graph and I don't want a title at the top of my graph so I can get rid of that. The font, Helvetica is a really nice font. I think I'll stick with that. And there's nothing wrong with the other settings. When I click on axis, this is where I can start to add the axis values and the axis names. Axis name on the Y axis is here and the axis line that I was missing, I can add by selecting axis line. The minimum value is zero, and I'd like to show the minimum value. The major grid line, these horizontal lines, I don't want those, so I'm going to turn them off. I don't want minor grid lines, but what I do want is some ticks. You can use the outside, centered, or inside ticks. I like the look of an outside tick. You see those little marks showed up for each of my axis labels. The y-axis is the dependent variable and I'm going to enter it with its units and then I'm going to select the whole thing and increase the font size
sort of weird what it's doing. There, I think that's big enough. Um, now, the next thing I noticed is that uh, I have four, it chose to add four numbers along the axis. I can change this by asking it to use five numbers or six numbers or seven numbers or eight numbers. Eventually, there will be too many numbers and they're not going to be very useful. So you have to, it's a matter of style. You need to choose how many numbers to use. So what I decided to do with the y-axis uh, was to increase the maximum value to 120 and ask it for six major steps. That gives me a nice clean axis going up in steps of 20 all the way to the top. Uh, I think that's a good goal. Having very um, uneven numbers like 1.25 on the x-axis doesn't make a lot of sense. No one, uh, no one drank 1.25 Red Bulls, so that's something else that we're going to have to finish, uh, that we're going to have to fix up. Selecting the numbers, I can increase the font size a little bit. I'm going to select, uh, increase the font size to 13. Back to the graph, I'll click on the graph, back to the axes. At the top of this little window, I can switch from the y-axis to the x-axis. I can add the x-axis name, that we have an x-axis line. The values at the bottom are a little concerning. The, as I just mentioned, the values at the bottom go up by odd numbers that weren't a part of our experiment, and I can fix that right here again. The maximum value of Red Bulls was 5. I can ask the program to give me 5 steps. That's perfect. The value axis is the number of Red Bulls consumed. And while we're in here, we can increase that font size. To 13. All right, the next target are these little circles and a line that should be in between the circles. There are two ways to do the line. Uh, the first one is called a trend line, and I'll show you what a linear trend line looks like. Looking at this data, I think we're close to a linear relationship, and it would be perfectly fine to use a linear trend line. Notice that it doesn't uh, intersect all of the points, and that's fine. It's a linear average of the data. The other option is to go into the style part of the menu and to ask it to make a connecting line that connects the dots. Now, the connecting line is also a fine way to do it, but given our data, I think the right way to do this graph is to use that linear trend line. Just to be complete, there's another option under the connecting line to give a curved connecting line and sometimes you're going to want to use that curved connecting line. I'm going to go with the trend line today. I want my stroke around the circles to be black. I want my connecting line to be black. I want my trend line to be black. I just clicked on the trend line and I can ask it to be black. I think that line is a little heavy. I'm going to make it one point. Come back to the points. Go back to the style. I'm also going to make those one point thick. Now everything in the graph is basically a one point font and it looks pretty sharp. The other style issue are these little circles and you're welcome to keep them as little circles or you can come into the style of the dots and choose to make pluses or X's or whatever you like and there is no right or wrong way to do that. Uh, while we're here one thing that I'll tell you isn't very nice is to select the shadow and the shadow might look okay on your screen but when you print this out the shadow isn't going to look very nice and so if there is a shadow deselect shadow and keep it as clean as you can. Now there's your graph. The next step of the graph is to select the graph copy it into the clipboard and move over to a fresh pages document. Now, I got this one ready in advance. The nice thing about this is that 
all of the elements are uh, all of the elements of how to title your report are here first lab report a title for the lab report this title is a conclusion of that caffeine increases heart rate of introductory biology students another way to do that would be to name it the effect of caffeine on the heart rate of introductory biology students either one is is fine it's better to stay away from very cute uh, catchy titles like you'd see in a newspaper or a magazine. I have my name, my A number, the name and number of the course, and importantly, which lab I'm in. Now that I'm all set up, I just have to paste my graph into the word processor. Oops, I got it in the wrong place. It's easy to move. Just drag it and drop it at the bottom. Underneath the graph, I'll enter my figure caption, starting with uh, the number of the figure and I'll give it a title. The effect of caffeine and Red Bull on the heart rate of introductory biology students. I'm going to change this to the heart rate of an introductory biology student. Those are the elements that are essential in your assignment this week. It's about, it's less than a page long. There is, There are other pieces of information that you can add to your caption, like how the data was collected, where it was collected, from whom, and under what conditions. Sometimes that information would go into your materials and methods or your result section of a full lab report. But in the case of this report, which is just the figure in the caption, you can add a little more information to build up your caption. Your goal, your overall goal in this project is to have someone pick up this figure who doesn't know what experiment you did, they can understand what experiment you did, and they can understand your data. And that's all for this screencast. See you later.